Whether it's unsuspecting victims being thrown onto subway tracks, stabbings on the platform, or violent assaults taking place within the actual car, every subway rider in New York City has heard the horror stories. But where they've likely got experience is getting on a train and there's a passenger there that's shouting at themselves or other passengers. The next minute they're asking for money, or they start mouthing off to other passengers on board the carriage. So what do you do? Do you take no notice, turn a blind eye, as it were? Do you intervene and risk inflaming the situation? Or do you just basically wait until the train pulls over and change carriages? Well, on May the 1st, Marine veteran Daniel Penny found himself in exactly that position when a homeless man called Jordan Neely began acting erratically and threatening passengers. Mr. Penny subdued Mr. Neely by putting him in a chokehold and Mr. Neely died. Daniel Penny now faces 15 years in prison after the Manhattan District Attorney charged him with second degree manslaughter. Daniel, what do you have to say about the charges? He's dealing with the situation, like I said, with the sort of integrity and honor uh, that is characteristic of who he is, characteristic of his honorable service in the United States Marine Corps. Support for Mr. Penny has been overwhelming, with more than $2 million raised for his legal defense fund on crowdfunding platform Give, Send, Go. In the description, it says that any excess proceeds will be donated to a mental health advocacy program in New York City. Demands for prosecution came from politicians including Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Progressives have also held public protests, claiming that had Mr. Neely had a house, he wouldn't have been on the train. I want you to know that the answer that we are fighting for, that we are all talking about, is housing. <laughs> Mr. Neely was typical of many suffering from mental illness who wander New York streets and subway platforms. He was homeless and well known to New York police as a drifter who'd complained of being mentally ill and sometimes suicidal. He had over 40 prior arrests. There's people in middle school and elementary school who remember Jordan this way. And then his mother was taken from him and her body was dumped in a suitcase on the highway, and it changed Jordan's mentality forever. Up until the 1970s, of course, those suffering from mental illness would have been treated in hospital. But then came the deinstitutionalization movement. The problem is, is that it was easy to say, we're gonna close hospitals, we're gonna reduce the budgets of states for mental health services, but they didn't provide anything in order to care for people in the community that's required. And as a result of that, we have the homelessness, the prisoners with mental illness, the mass violent events, the addictions, and a variety of social pathologies. So was Daniel Penny wrong to intervene? The details of what happened will presumably be presented at trial, but it's clear his intention wasn't to kill Mr. Neely. It was to protect himself and others. Attorneys for Mr. Neely's family disagree, saying that Mr. Penny should face charges for murder. When you're trained in combat, that gives you something that the average person does not have. It gives you options. It gives you the option of bear hugging, of striking, of many other things. But Daniel Penny chose, intentionally chose, a technique to use that is designed to cut off air. Whatever happens at trial, one certain outcome is that the charges against Mr. Penny will deter others from intervening in situations that could get out of hand. If you do, and something goes wrong in New York City, you will be the one that gets prosecuted.